Folks, a lot of people ask me, break down the live scope screen. So that's what we're doing on this episode. So stick with me. This is a little different as you're going to find out, but we're breaking it down and we're going to do it the best way that we know how by Active Captain. What's up folks? It's Matt from Three Pound Fishing. We're back on the water and today I've got a little something different for you. Tonight I have something different. First off, I don't really necessarily ever fish at night. Let's just say I don't fish at night, period. It's just not one of my things. But tonight I came back out after a guide trip and I said, you know what? We've got about two and a half hours of daylight left. We're gonna go out here, we're gonna make a video. And we're gonna talk about two things. This is what we're gonna talk about in this episode. One is how to read live scope. I get, it's amazing. You know, you, you, you do a bunch of guide trips and what I'm, a lot of these videos get made based off of the experiences I have on a guide trip and a lot of people just don't know how to read live scope so we're gonna go through that I'll actually have a live scope picture up and we're gonna go through what these items are on that on that image we're gonna catch some fish and then number two is we're going to be reviewing the 14 foot ozark rod three pound fishing rod uh, that just came out so very exciting for us to add another uh rod in the lineup for three pound fishing it's just it's they're just fantastic let me show you a shot of it i've got it here it's a uh, it's actually a uh a three piece okay so we're going to be casting to them but we're also going to be vertical jigging and we're going to do it with the 14 footer this is the new one from ozark rods Completely sexy. It weighs 1.8 ounces unofficially. That's what I put it on my scale in my kitchen. Wanted to kind of get an idea. Feels very much like the. I think the, you know, I I like a 14. I think this is pretty freaking awesome. Now I have been using the 13 when we go to Darbone those places. 13's the where I go. But now that we have the 14 available, I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna see. This might be the rod that I'll be using. So we're gonna go through that. We're gonna go through live scope and show you how to read it. And uh, what you're seeing on the screen, we're gonna put some fish in the boat. So thanks for joining, I appreciate it. Please subscribe. Uh, we're gonna have a great time tonight. It's the evening, folks. I don't typically fish in the evening. Oh, baby. First drop, it is a hammer. Oh, and he got off, I didn't set the hook. Good enough. Dang it, that was a good fish. Big fish. Hoisted in by the new 14 footer. <laughs> that is awesome. Look at that hammer. Look at that hammer. That is freaking awesome. First fish on the 14 footer. Oh, that's just a beautiful fish. We're gonna keep it for pictures. Certainly I'd like to take some with the All right, this is the first uh, part of two parts that we're gonna break down this live scope screen here. I wanna kinda break it down into a kind of a beginner and then an intermediate. So we're gonna start off with the actual surface of the ground. I know it seems elementary, but the actual line of the, sur the, the surface is actually this right here. So we are 20 foot deep and we have basically a water column that's 20 foot deep. The water column is actually this area right here. Anything between that and the top line represents your water column. Now we have structure and fish. Obviously those are them right there. This is low structure, maybe anywhere between two to five feet high, but it is keeping a lot of fish on it. And these are good solid eater fish. The, uh, let's see, the next thing we got, we've got a nice, um, oh, let's talk about the grid lines. These grid lines here, you can remove them. I know that they irritate some people, but for me, I love them. I, I mean, it gives me an e easy reference to how far these fish are out and I keep them in there. So the next thing I'm going to show is this interference. It's not really interference, but it's uh, I probably have my gain up just a little bit high, so it's picking up some uh, some static out there. Um, but it's nothing. It's really nothing. It's no bait fish. It's nothing that I'm too concerned about, and I can see everything pretty much through it. So you can actually see the bait here falling into the pile here. And a lot of times, what we try to do is we try to bring the bait away from the fish. 
kind of uh, entice them a little bit so and actually I, I picked up that fish there so that's nice to see there anyway back to the show all right so let's talk about that so I'm in love with braid right now and uh, I don't see that changing in the nearby future there's a uh, and I think the ability to set that hook so quick is is critical on this 14 footer even more so in my opinion I mean the longer the longer the rods get the more important it is for you to be able to set the hook when you just immediately pull up on it there's no stretch in it and to me that's that's huge I mean to me it makes sense because you know because there's a lag because of a longer rod 13 14 15 whatever rod length you end up getting um, there's a lag between you actually pulling up because of how heavy it is how big it is to you setting the hook so having a braid allows you to sink it into the hook the, the fish's roof of their mouth so quickly so very critical all the other thing is doing i'm doing right now is i'm pitching this is a 14 footer i've actually probably got roughly around 17 foot of line out and i let those fish get to about 14 15 foot and then i just kind of pitch it in there and let it do its pendulum thing that one right there actually was kind of just sitting straight up and down so oh baby another big fish good night right there bam 14 footers treat me good man <laughs> the other thing i get asked a lot about is the uh the reel i use i use a flugel reel i get it at grizzly jig um i really like it i think it's a 200 series or whatever size 200 or something like that but man i, I just i really like them i've got a lot of reels at home but every reel right now every rod i have has a the same exact flugel on it All right, so it's a great evening on the water, catching tons of fish with the 14 footer. But I can tell you that uh, live scope obviously plays a major part to that. I use the 8612, which you see right there. I use a cornfield crappie gear mount, and my picture is pretty good. I mean, checking out my picture right here, I'm, I'm pleased with it. I think, again, I could say that I would like to take my gain down just a little bit, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, sharp images, and um, I use an 8612, a 12 inch, I believe in buying the largest screen that you can possibly afford um, but let's break down the screen just some more okay when I'm targeting fish right now I'm gonna pause it right here the fish I'm gonna target in this pile is the one that is the brightest and is definitely the biggest and this is it it's not really that hard to, to pick it out it does take a little time maybe uh, identifying it but this guy is sending me the biggest return it is definitely the biggest of the group and that's the guy that I'm really targeting in when I bring the bait into the pile now, obviously with a pile like this, you have several fish, it's difficult to be perfect and you really have no say on what fish is going to take it. So here we are targeting that fish, but unfortunately a fish on top grabs it first. We catch a fish, we're happy about that, but we didn't get the fish that we were really targeting, which is that big guy down there. Now, when we go after piles like this that have a lot of fish, now we always are targeting the back end, the high end. We're trying to get as many fish off this as possible. So the, the what you don't want to do is to go into a pile and go storming in there and bringing your, raking your line through there, raking your weight through there. And this is going to scatter a lot of the fish. So always target the fish that are on top, the fish that are on the sides, um, before you start crashing right through the center of it. I think that's the best way to go. Now, if you are only targeting big fish, obviously just go after the big fish on these piles. But it's going to be a little tough with this type of pile that we're fishing on this one and lastly just to break down this screen just a little bit more i'm fishing 45 feet out i used to preach fishing 20 feet that's not the case up here you can modify this information that you have on your screen do as little as possible and most important the number that is the most important is the depth in which you fish Folks, this decides how big your fish are going to appear on your screen. It's something you're going to get used to. I always fish with 30 foot depth regardless. Now, if I'm in eight foot of water, I get it. I might tweak it to 20 or something like that. But nine out of 10 times, you're going to see my monitor set to 30 foot depth because I'm so used to what those fish are supposed to look like. Very important. So just pitching out there, really no secret to it. And letting the pendulum into the, the pile is, the, is all I'm doing. And I've always got my hand on the on the line. Does not matter. 
my lot my fingers are on the line the entire time and more times than not I can feel it through that line before I can feel it through any rock but I'm now I do feel like I could cast with the 14 footer, which is nice. So I can flip it out there pretty good. Is it as effective as maybe a shorter rod? No, but you certainly can do it. Um, again, I only use these longer rods when we're getting right on top of them, usually in muddy water. I'm, I'm a fan of casting to them right now, but uh, you know, Darbone, Kentucky Lake, I was 100% vertical jigging, so this you know, this could be the rod. It'll be this one or the 13 footer for sure. I like it though. It's very nice and comfortable. What's up, TikTokers? We're gonna do something we haven't done before, and that is go live on TikTok. So we are out here in the evening, and uh, that's right, folks. We are on TikTok, and this was my first official live video on TikTok. I won't say it went incredibly great. But it was a lot of fun, and I can tell you that I will be doing it again. In fact, you'll see me live on TikTok probably more than most platforms. Um, I never thought I would say that, but honestly, I do enjoy TikTok. They're short, quick videos, and you need to swing over there and check them out. So, yeah, that's me doing my very first uh, TikTok. Oh, baby. Dang! Woo! Let them go. Good fish right there. Oh, dang. That's fun. A TikTok video. A live TikTok video. Did you go three pound fishing is on TikTok? Who knew? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go back to a 10 footer right here. And uh, the main reason is I feel more comfortable right now uh, casting. I think that there's a better chance you putting more fish in the boat with casting. And uh, so I try to stay away from it as long as I possibly can before I vertical jig. If, I, if it was muddy water, if it was, you know, I felt like I could really get up on top and they weren't spooking, then it would be another thing. But right now I just feel like you're going to get more fish by casting to it first. And it is freaking boat crazy out here. Crazy. Beautiful evening. That's so when that pile gets out there roughly around 30 feet is when we'll cast to it. So that's where it's at right now. And here we go. Entering. There was one bite. Ooh. I love casting with my 10 footer. Oh. What a great fish. Mm -mm -mm. Right now these fish are just, they're, they're like, I won't say they're everywhere, but it's just they're in weird spots. I, don't, I mean, they're deep, deep as all get out. Water temperature is 85 degrees. They're down there at roughly 15 foot. I mean, I can't wait to go to Grenada and visit. I was gonna go to Grenada this summer, so I'm definitely gonna go there and do some videos. Uh, looking forward to it. It's a, uh, Maybe they're a little shallower there because of the muddy water. Who knows? Oh, this could be a good fish, folks. This guy came from the dirt. Oh, yeah. That's going to end it, folks. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, check out that 14-footer if you're interested in a long rod like that. And uh, the TikTok video. Mm, that kind of intrigued me. So... Good fish, man. Great fish. Great night. Beautiful. It's just absolutely beautiful. Thanks for watching 3 Pound Fishing. Partnered up with these fantastic companies.